Good afternoon and welcome. We are happy to have such a full crowd here today and to have so many people following us today on our live stream. Let us begin with a prayer. I would like to invite to the stage Father Ignacio de Ribera Martin, a professor from the School of Philosophy, to lead us in prayer. Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, we have gathered this morning to welcome the next president of the Catholic University of America. Our university has a unique and providential mission in service to the church, the nation, and the world. As our mission statement reads, dedicated to advancing the dialogue between faith and reason, the Catholic University of America seeks to discover and impart the truth through excellence in teaching and research. Mercy takes here and now the form of intellectual charity. This is indeed a great mission that you have entrusted to our university through the church and a challenging one given the complex times we are living in. Please continue to be our light always. Trusting in you with renewed hope, we leap our hearts today in prayer to implore your blessing upon our new president, Dr. Peter Kilpatrick, upon his wife, Nancy, and upon his whole family. Under his leadership, may our university continue to grow and bear much fruit in fulfilling her mission of intellectual charity, always faithful to the teaching of Jesus Christ as handed on by the church. May your Holy Spirit guide all his decisions and sustain all his labors for the advancement of the common good and the mission of the university. We also want to thank you for the dedicated service of President Garvey over the past 12 years and for the many ways in which you have blessed our university under his leadership. May your blessing remain with him always, with his wife, Jean, and with all his family. All this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. We gather here today to welcome Dr. Peter Kilpatrick, the 16th president of the Catholic University of America. Also today with us is Nancy, his wife. Welcome, Nancy and Peter, to Catholic University. We are so glad that you're here. Today we, mark, today we mark a moment of transition. Transitions are moments of change and uncertainty. I'm sure we all have questions that uh, we want answered. But there are also opportunities. Moments like these bring our priorities into focus. We are able to see more clearly what's important. Here at Catholic University, there has never been a more exciting time for us. We have recently emerged from the worst of a global pandemic, perhaps the most serious crisis we've ever seen on this campus. Yet, we rose to great heights. We launched the most successful fundraising campaign in university history, raising over $400 million. We won, a, we won $91 million in research grants from NASA, our largest research grants ever. And as we hear every day, we are transforming this campus physically, building buildings like our nursing and science building and our dining commons, among other projects. Now, in this transition, we have the opportunity to dream even bigger. There really is no limit to what the Catholic University of America can accomplish. We haven't had a moment of opportunity this big since 2010, when John and Jean Garvey moved into Nugent Hall. John is here with us today. Join me in welcoming President Garvey to the stage. Thank you, Karna. 
and thanks to all of you for joining us. I'll be just a minute. <laughs> Booker T. Washington said, few things help an individual more than to place responsibility on him and let him know that you trust him. This is what we do when we give our children chores around the house. We begin by assigning the little ones simple tasks like carrying the dishes out or picking up toys in the living room. And as time goes on, we give them greater responsibilities. It builds confidence and a sense of purpose. As we get older, our responsibilities grow with us. We take on leadership roles in school, we buy a car, we get a job. I remember pacing the floor the morning of my wedding day, worrying about the enormity of the commitment I was about to undertake. I couldn't sleep at all the night our first child was born at the excitement of being a father in part, and in part because I had some concern about my own ability to be a good one. All of these undertakings make us responsible for something bigger than ourselves. Apart from my family, leading this university has been both the joy and the biggest undertaking of my life. Twelve years ago, Jean and I were holed up at the Four Seasons in Georgetown as I prepared some remarks for my own introduction to the community, and I remember thinking, this is such an enormous job, I can't imagine how I can do it. I've never raised a lot of money, I don't know beans about finance, I'm going to pass on tenure for biology professors and I've never even taken a course in biology, and I'm afraid of crowds. <laughs> Felt a little like Moses when he got his assignment. I'm not eloquent, I am slow of speech and of tongue. Oh my Lord, send I praise some other person. I was in awe of the responsibility the board had entrusted to me. I came to realize that they knew better than I did. My role in the matter was not what I imagined. My wife Jean provided assurance to the community. If somebody as nice as she was could live with me, maybe I was somebody they could do business with. <laughs> She offer, offered me a continual assurance that I was worthy of the board's trust. The work of the university, I also learned, was not mine to do. The provost knew more about biology than I ever would. The advancement team knew a lot about raising money. Leahy Hall was filled with financial professionals. I feel confident in saying that there is almost no job here that needs doing that someone else is not better equipped to perform than I. My job has been to make sure that's true and provide them the tools they need to do their work. Perhaps the most important assignment that takes place during any president's tenure is the choice of his or her successor. In that undertaking by tradition, the incumbent plays no role. For the past eight months, I, like the rest of you, have sat back with my fingers crossed, hoping for a good outcome. I'm delighted at the result, and I now realize that I should have foreseen that because the decision was made by the people who've been doing the work of the university all along. The Board of Trustees and the search committee were populated by trustees and students, faculty and staff, and we have worked together harmoniously for years. We had the same interest in finding an even better president than we have had. So it was with considerable delight that I learned that the person that they lit upon was someone I tried to hire as provost halfway through my tenure. <laughs> he was one of those people who knew more about academics than I did and who was in love with the mission of a Catholic university. I couldn't persuade him then to leave his job, but our acquaintance may have planted a seed that ripened over seven years the way cherry trees do. Our university motto is Deus Lux Mea Est, God is my light. It's a rare claim in higher education today. Our most prominent schools are guided by different stars. Some of them cater to political orthodoxies. Some seek the glory that shines around Division I football and basketball. You'll recall the passage in Exodus when Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt and into the land of the Canaanites. <clears throat> it said, by day the Lord went ahead them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. If we keep God as our light, we cannot fail to reach the promised land. I'm confident that the board has found the right person to lead us there. So Peter and Nancy, 
Welcome to Catholic University. told not to touch this. <laughs> you can't resist, right, when you're, when you're up here. Something all new members of this community learn, and Peter and Nancy, you'll learn this soon, if you haven't learned it already, is that we have the friendliest, smartest, and most engaged students in the nation. And the coolest, right? <laughs> Goes without saying, but I just had to say it. Checking all those boxes is Abby Anger, double major in politics and psychology and president of our Student Government Association. I would like to invite Abby to the podium to give some words of welcome to Dr. Kilpatrick on behalf of the student body. Abby. Okay, I might have to adjust this again. I'm less tall than all of the presenters so far. Okay, <laughs> Dr. P Kilpatrick, it is my honor to welcome you on behalf of my fellow students to the Catholic University of America. Welcome to a university dedicated to scholarship, the pursuit of excellence, and formation of strong, faith-filled leaders. Welcome to a university whose mission as chartered by the Vatican is to be in service to church, nation, and world, and to a community that works every day to embody what it means to be a holy Catholic person and instill the beauty of this vocation into those whom we send forth. Welcome to a university whose students truly seek to serve each other, building intentional relationships with those from different life experiences than our own. Through so lots of service opportunities, including justice and immersion trips, our weekly service sites, or commitments to long-term service. Welcome to a university who truly has the most kind, faith-filled students you'll ever know. Students who are exemplars of what it means to love as Christ loves. Looking forward to the decades to come, what awaits our university? The campus infrastructure is expanding with the addition of a new student dining hall, nursing building, and innovative sustainability projects. After 24 years of dedication and service to our university, the Franciscans are leaving, and the Dominicans are coming into our Office of Campus Ministry. After 12 years of strong and innovative leadership that have undoubtedly changed the trajectory of our university, President Garvey is practicing his Italian and headed to our Rome campus. With the welcome of Dr. Kilpatrick, we are peering out onto a new horizon. Pope Benedict XVI, in his encyclical letter, Deus Caritas Est, said, being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and decisive direction. Encounter. The mission of encounter is what awaits our university under the leadership of Dr. Kilpatrick. The Catholic University of America has always been this point of encounter for our student body, the place that gives life new horizon and decisive direction. Dr. Kilpatrick, I welcome you to join us in this mission of encounter and truly get to know our student body. You will be amazed by their scholarship, their kindness, and their faith. Dr. Kilpatrick and Ms. Kilpatrick, we welcome you to our community a community that will encounter you, your family, your loved ones, with open hearts and open arms. Thank you so much. My dear friends, as Archbishop of Washington and Chancellor of the Catholic University of America, the national university founded by the U.S. bishops, I warmly welcome our new president, Dr. Peter Kilpatrick. You have my support and prayers as you take on this new responsibility and new opportunity to guide the university into the next era and prepare future generations of students as they grow in knowledge and faith. I thank President John Garvey 
for his dedication and leadership for these past 12 years. My prayers are with you both and with the entire Cardinal community. On behalf of the Search Advisory Committee of Catholic University's Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to introduce the 16th president of the Catholic University of America. It's a testament to the caliber of the university that we had a deep, talented, and qualified pool of candidates to choose from. We considered many excellent applicants in the process, but it was Dr. Peter Kilpatrick who consistently impressed the search committee with his deep faith, his love of Catholic higher education, his extensive academic credentials as a chemical engineer, and his proven leadership and administrative abilities. The higher ed landscape is not an easy one to navigate, but the Board of Trustees is confident that Dr. Kilpatrick, motivated by our unique mission and propelled by his own vision and enthusiasm, is the best choice to lead Catholic University forward at this time. I'm eager for all of you to get to know our new president, and I'm sure you'll be equally impressed by his qualifications and dedication to Catholic University's mission. Peter, welcome aboard, and we all look forward to working with you. Do you applaud a video? Let's Here today as a representative of the Board of Trustees is the Vice Chair of the Board, Bill Conway. He and his wife, Joanne, have given more than $80 million in support of the Conway School of Nursing. Con Catholic University Conway Scholars are now car caring for patients in 16 hospitals across the country, from Washington, D.C. to Massachusetts to Texas. And they practice a variety of specialties, from pediatric oncology to surgical intensive care units. Join me today in welcoming Mr. Conway to the stage. He will introduce our 16th president of Catholic University of America. Thank you, Karna. I'm not going to touch the microphone, having seen my predecessors. Uh, Peter and Nancy, welcome to Catholic University. I'm here on behalf of the trustees, including the chairman, Victor Smith, who you just heard from. He, requests that he, he regrets that he couldn't be here. I want you to know that while the trustees of Catholic University selected you, and technically we're your bosses, <laughs> you will find that we're your collaborators, your advisors, and your partners. The board exists to conserve what is best about this university and to aid you in looking ahead, identifying opportunities, flagging potential pitfalls, and helping to, steal, to steer this, not steal anything. <laughs> is that the fifth commandment or the sixth? Anyway, uh, to steer this most extraordinary institution, you had tremendous competition, as uh, Victor mentioned, we had over 170 candidates interested in this job, and it speaks a lot about your experience and your character that we chose you. This community is about to learn about, is about to learn you what the search committee and the trustees learned in their careful evaluation. You are a serious scholar and accomplished senior academic leader. You own or share a dozen patents in your field of chemical engineering. You have worked in a large public institution, NC State, where you were chair of the Department of Chemical and Bio, uh, Medical Biomolecular Engineering, followed by a large Catholic institution, Notre Dame, where you were dean of the engineering school for over a decade, and then followed most recently by your service as provost of the Illinois Institute of Technology. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, you have thought seriously about our university's distinctive mission and its sense of service, charity, and scholarship. Your experience and skill set convinced the trustees that you were the right person to help us accomplish our mission. As Father Ignacio said in his blessing, our mission statement, in our mission statement, 
CUA is dedicated to advancing the dialogue between faith and reason, something we certainly need these days, all in service to the church, the nation, and the world. There's nothing like Catholic University. I found that to be true to, that to be true in my years of involvement with this institution. The best of our faith is on display every day. It's in our professors, in and out of the classroom, our dedicated staff and administration, and our students, exceptional. I know that you're eager to get to know them, to serve them, and to lead them to greater things. On behalf of the whole university community, we welcome you and Nancy, and we look forward to getting to know you and working together. Thank you. And I, and I have a present for you that'll make you a cardinal. So we were going to adjust this hat to make it a little cardinal beanie, but we didn't. This is going to make you another kind of cardinal. Welcome. Thank, thank you, Bill. You're Appreciate welcome. it. I, I was told I could take this off after. <laughs> well, thank you for making me feel so very welcome. Um, as uh, the words were being shared, I thought, who, who is this person that they're talking about? That's certainly not me. Um, I have so many people to thank uh, for helping facilitate my being here. Um, first of all, uh, my parents, William and Patty Kilpatrick, who have now been dead for many years. Um, I owe them really everything, my life, uh, my formation, and who I am as a person. So thank you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> my wife, Nancy, who's been with me for nearly 44 years, um, and who's been my greatest cheerleader, uh, my sounding board, the love of my life, uh, my soulmate. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> my children and grandchildren, um, Elizabeth, Zachary, Charlie, Alexandra, uh, Lucy, Oliver, Anna, and their spouses, Jake, Natalie, and Derek, uh, thank you for making my, my life so rich and full. And my mentors all along the way. Uh, Hal, Reuben, Tom, Alan, and Raj, thank you for teaching me so much about academic life and how universities work and how the world of higher ed is being transformed right now. Our lives are so intimately intertwined with the people with whom we interact, and I have learned and benefited from literally hundreds of persons, uh, and I want to thank them all uh, very personally and professionally. I would also like to thank the uh, Search Advisory Committee and the Board of Trustees. Thank you for entrusting to me this enormous uh, responsibility as Catholic University moves into the next phase of its history. It's going to be a lot of hard work, um, but I think there is tremendous momentum on this campus, and I want to thank the Garveys for that momentum. Uh, John and Jean, thank you for setting Nancy and me uh, up for success. Uh, thank you for your very warm welcome to campus. Uh, thank you for your advice and counsel. And I hope you'll stay close to your cell phones because uh, you can expect to hear from me often. Universities exist uh, first and foremost for our students. Our role as faculty and staff is to help them mature, learn, and as uh, Basil Moreau once said, be brought to completion as persons and as citizens who will contribute so much to our world, our nation, and the church. I have been so very edified by the joy and the virtue of the students that I've met here at Catholic University. Thank you for attracting me to this great university. A university can do nothing without its faculty and staff. In fact, they're the engine of the university. 
I'm so very grateful to the faculty here at Catholic University and, and the staff for persevering in our mission when it wasn't easy. Please know that I am committed to being the very best servant of this university that I can possibly be so that we can thrive in the years to come. The future of higher education is, is changing and it's, it's changing rapidly. In many ways, I, I fear universities have lost their way and are in danger of, uh, of becoming extinct. Uh, the Catholic University of America has so much to say to the world of higher education. So what are my hopes and my dreams for Catholic University? First of all, I, I believe the way forward for higher ed in general and for Catholic University specifically is to be an example for the world of an institution that places its emphasis on the human person as the supreme value in our society. We must also be an example of a place where faith and reason, as Pope St. John Paul the Great said, are two wings on which rise the human spirit towards the contemplation of truth. We all have faith in someone or something, and faith should never be divorced from our lives or the life of the mind and our activities in our daily lives. They must be integrated. Another significant challenge for universities and for higher education are the ways in which our academic disciplines have become disconnected from each other and from the larger context that we are here to be at the service of humanity. We must reintegrate the disciplines so that all learning at our university is integrated and placed at the service of our broader society. When the students who are educated and the education that we offer are rendered for the good of all humankind, Catholic University will truly be everything that she should be to demonstrate the love of God, the love of neighbor, and the service of the body of Christ. I recognize that Catholic University, like many other universities, has some real needs. Like all tuition-based universities, Catholic University needs enrollment growth, or, or more specifically, revenue growth. I believe our unique value proposition as a university, along with some focused marketing and communications, can help us grow our enrollments, and I look forward to that challenge. I am never happier than when I am communicating to people the deep and lasting values of a truly Catholic education. Catholic University has aspirations to be re recognized as one of the elite research universities in higher education. And this aspiration is well within our grasp. As Ex Court Ecclesia says, one of the important missions of a Catholic university is to perform scientific research and to put it in the context of a larger societal and faith-based mission. Having grown research at other universities, I look forward to working with our provost, Aaron Dominguez, and with our faculty to grow research here at Catholic University. In addition to tuition growth, fundraising and the growth of our endowment are important dimensions of our path to prosperity. And John and, and the advancement team with Scott have done so much uh, in this area. I believe excellent fundraising is all about building very strong relationships and friendships. And I cherish this part of my role Everyone who cherishes our values wants to be part of our growth. And so this will be an enjoyable part of the job here. I'm deeply honored to be called to serve in this new role. Um, I don't think I'm worthy of it, but I'm dedicated to the challenge. I thank President Garvey for his many years of outstanding service to Catholic University. I also thank the many officers, deans, faculty, staff, students, and alumni and other stakeholders of the university for their ongoing commitment to the university. I thank all the bishops, the cardinals, the trustees, the donors, all who have made this university great. I pledge to continue the great traditions and commitments of Catholic University and to help build her up for generations to come. Thank you.